if you, we cut our hands, we cannot save the country. The, our hand is both sides, Taliban and Americans, both. Scared of, 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 of both? The Dwaru House of the Shishkumur Awam, you are in for Sarsar Takavi. Kahawai, Kadawai, Dwaru. Well, everyone we talk to says it's too dangerous on the streets of Kandahar. They are, they're fearful, and we also have this rule we shouldn't be anywhere longer than 15 or 20 minutes, so we're also going to leave this neighborhood too. So we took refuge in an unexpected place. Kandahar is home to dozens of bodybuilding gyms. It's popular all over the country. This one belongs to one of the country's most famous bodybuilders, Mohammed Gul Lalai. I love what you have on your back. <laughs> thank what does it you, say? Thank you. What does it say? Yeah, it's proud to be Afghan. Proud to be Afghan? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Are you proud to be Afghan? Uh, yeah, why not? I'm really? Afghan. Yeah. What, what, what is it when you when you make yourself strong, you're making yourself strong as an Afghan? Uh, yeah, yeah, in Afghan. Well, I'm sure Afghanistan is proud of you as well. <laughs> thank you. The gym is plastered with pictures of Mohammed in his prime. Not only did he win the Mr. Kandahar title, he was also Mr. Afghanistan. Although showing off your muscles wasn't so easy when Taliban set the rules. In Taliban days, our country was in, uh, uh, for the upper bodies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> not in underwear. You could, you could wear what you're wearing now. Yeah, the upper body. Yes. I know that Taliban liked bodybuilding, wrestling, because it's a powerful uh, sports. <laughs> but I wondered what they'd make of the poster boy for Afghan bodybuilders the American action star turned politician. You go to any of the hundreds of gyms, you'll see Arnold Schwarzenegger in his prime, which was a few decades ago, beaming down at you with, of course, his body exposed. Why you not? want to be like Arnold? My hold is much there, that I'll be the same like Arnold, and you want to make my body fit. And I want to show my body to the world, that Afghan can become the champion of the world. Arnold is like Afghanist people. <laughs> His face is, he looks like Afghan people. He looks like Afghan. Arnold, Arnold yeah. looks like an Afghan. Yeah. Did he come to visit Afghanistan, Arnold? No, 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 no. Arnold is not coming. Maybe now that he's not governor, he can come. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he is governor, that's very good. But even here, I couldn't stay for long. On the streets outside, unpredictable Kandahar had struck again. I found myself in the midst of a military operation. U.S. soldiers nervously scanned the streets. Traffic was blocked. Tension mounted. Sorry, what, what, what actually, what, why is the, all the traffic blocked? What happened today? Uh, we got a vehicle down right over there. Wheel came off of it, so we're trying to stop the traffic from coming through so we can get the... You're trying to fix the wheel on your, on your vehicle? Uh, we're just trying to get it hooked up so we can tow it out. Is this a security? Yeah. You're worried about it? Well, yeah, we don't want a bunch of traffic going through and trying to hook up and get out. All this over a broken wheel? When something like this happens, you can see people get nervous. The Afghans are nervous, the foreign forces are nervous. This is the kind of town where assassinations happen, suicide bombers. I mean, you've got this kind of a target here for too long. You're creating a real risk for yourself and for the Afghans here. Not everyone is complaining about the U.S. presence here. Some Afghans with connections and contracts are getting rich. 20 minutes outside the city, in the secure perimeter of the U.S. military airbase, a mini town is springing up to cater for the influx of foreign contractors and troops. Billions are being spent to fight the Taliban and win the war for Afghan hearts and minds. It's a good life in this bubble. What are the most popular ones? Uh, American movie, uh, Indian movie, everything. What do you like? Uh, like uh, Van Damme. Van Arn Damme? Yeah, like Arnold. Arnold yeah. Schwarzenegger? Yeah, yes. now I like uh, Arnold, Van Damme. 
this movie too much. I see always. Always? Yeah, you say movie is very good. You know it takes money. Put a nickel in the pot boy. To have all of life's joys. Dive in the pot boy. Teach it everyone. Lend a helping hand. 25 cents. Put a nickel in the pot. Not a boy. You guys are shopping? Yeah, we live down here. Really <laughs> oh, look at that accent. English. English. Yeah. Yes, where are you from? Lincolnshire. Lincolnshire. Yeah. Where are you from? Florida. Yes, Florida. <laughs> and you're going shopping yeah, here. We, this yeah. is like Beverly Hills. Uh, huh? I don't want to go home. I'm going to stay here for years. I want to work here for as long as I can. You work here as long as you can? Yeah, I've learned more here than I did at school in the UK, that I did working in the UK. I've met all these great people from all around the world. It's just much better to be here than in England. It's a dream come true. Yeah, it is actually. For me, it is. I love it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Life is good if you're a contractor making money behind the barriers. For now, it's a boom town. We left the safety of the American bubble to go into another one of the man keeping an eye on us here. Just look at the security as we enter the compound of Ahmed Wali Karzai. Concrete barriers, HESCO barriers, armed men. This is a man with a lot of enemies. Just look at how full it is, packed with people. It's like this every day. They come from all across the province and beyond. There he is now. They miss either on the phone a lot or talking to people a lot. That's essentially what he does. Hello, Ahmed Wali. How are you? Nice good to see you. you. How have you been? I'm good, fine, thank good. you very much. He's Kandahar's most powerful man with the tribal and political connections to get any job done. And in the room with him, there were ex-Taliban, and who knows, possibly future Taliban, and the people caught in the middle. They were working as a day labor, which is uh, the coalition the Americans are paying them uh, salary. So they were going to go to the work in the morning, and the Taliban stopped them to make example of them. But I was more it's been two weeks this happened. Two weeks ago. Two weeks ago? Two weeks ago, yeah. They were here were cut off. Shocking, but sadly, all too part of life here. Hamid Wali invited me to lunch for a chance to catch up. But you must have threats against you. It's the most um, heavily secured place in Kandahar, I think. This um, is for um, for the big attacks, for like suicide attacks. As you know, there was two major suicide attacks on me on my office. Are there still threats against you now? Every day. It's Taliban or of course. criminals? No, no, Taliban. Drug traffickers? Taliban, Taliban. It's all Taliban. Mm -hmm. Very difficult. Ahmed Wali has also been the target of many accusations. Some call him the problem in Kandahar, not the solution. I'm a little off the media. Why? Because you come under so many accusations that you have to yeah. respond to all the time? Because when I was down here last year with President Karzai and General McChrystal, the top commander at the time, you remember, mm -hmm. there was all the talk about they were going to put pressure on you. Yeah, this is, um, it's over. Why? Because you proved? <laughs> they have the same. <laughs> they have done nothing different. Hmm. What do you think it was? It was mostly unproven allegation, which was making things bad. Well, they allege that you're involved in the drugs trade. Everything, they allege that you're the main power broker. The they even allege that you support the Taliban. Yeah. But you know what they always say with no smoke without fire. Well, that's in the past. There's an old Afghan proverb that says, whoever controls Kandahar controls Afghanistan. No one ever seems to win for long. Today it's safe enough for traditional wrestling, but only just. Moments like this are little victories. That's how life is measured here. 
with no real certainty about who, in the end, will come out on top. Until now, this trip has taken me to Afghanistan's great cities. But leaving Kandahar, I headed to the center, to a village called Pai Kotal. Eighty percent of Afghans live in rural areas like this, eking out a meager existence. The further you get from the city center, the hubs, this is what it's like. You feel like you're going back in time. There are no roads, the houses are mud brick. People pretty well live, like they've always lived. There's no electricity, there's no running water. After several hours of driving, the car could go no further on this road. If I wanted to travel as most Afghans do, I would need some donkeys and of course a guide. We were soon on our way, despite a hesitant start. Ah, is this the right way? Are we going the right way? Afghans have a really good sense of direction though. Timing. They're not so good. When we left, they said it was about 40 minutes riding on donkeys. 40 minutes later, they said, well, another hour. And then an hour later, it was satonim, satinim, another hour and a half. Finally, after five hours, I made it to the village. But weariness was swept away by the warmth of a traditional welcome. Afghans say it doesn't matter how big your house is, it's how big your heart is. Pai Kotal, nestling in the foothills of the Koibaba Mountains, is home to around 70 families. They don't have much. The nearest school and clinic are hours away on foot. Young men have to leave to find paid labor. This is what life under the poverty line looks like. Anwar Hussein is the Malik or headman. Mm. Mm. they say even the bread isn't good here. They would love to have bread made of wheat. Instead, it's made of barley. Life expectancy in Afghanistan is around 45 years. Around half the children are malnourished. It's hard to fathom how they endure such grueling lives. It's easier to talk when we gather as women on our own. What do you think about the world outside Afghanistan? What is it like? <laughs> Amariki, Inglistan, Europa. Ah, chief you come in. Mm. Mm. 